Okay, we're live apparently. Let me see what that looks like. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Hello and welcome to our first live stream. We're going to call this right now Unreal at Night. Uh, the name may change. I don't know. I'm John Henry Davis, aka Rhyme, and I'm sitting here looking at James Creek paint something, which is what we're going to be doing sort of all stream while we talk about, you know, whatever current event, not current event, whatever things we have lined up. <sighs> James. I hear you have like a book coming out or something. I do. My fourth book is uh, up on Amazon, but the the system, man, the system's coming to get me. It's keeping me down because I I release my books through Ingram Spark, and Ingram Spark has to send the data to Amazon, and Amazon has to accept the data, and sometimes apparently that can take six weeks. So right now, if you go to my page, you don't even have cover art on the Amazon page. Okay, so you believe that. I mean, you know, Amazon is a little a little evil corp. So it's not surprising. But don't worry, you know, in like two to three months, they'll have purchased Ingram Spark and you won't have the option. Dude. Honestly, is Amazon even doing good anymore? I mean, I'm not like, I don't hold stock. I imagine that Bezos is like worth 400 billion. I don't know. The weird thing is, I don't even know who is able to compete with Amazon at the moment. Uh, I know their stock skyrocketed from uh, COVID, but mm -hmm. a lot of stocks skyrocketed from COVID. And I checked my uh, my portfolio because of uh, you know California imploding, and all the stocks that were like really hot two years ago have all gone back to like. 2018 levels maybe I mean, i'm just doo-doo dog shit at uh picking stocks but we're also kind of imploding i don't know man stocks seem kind of old hat you gotta throw all your money into i think the shit coin market is back you should look into that just start gambling <clears throat> i'm considering buying more bitcoin but uh apparently the fd uh c the fdic rather is pulling some extreme shenanigans with uh, forcibly selling SVB to a company that will it will sort of be obligated to divest themselves of uh, the crypto holdings. So you're talking like hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin are going to get sold uh, in the next few weeks. Okay, well, I mean that's good news for niggas want to buy, I guess. Hey, it's I all about timing correctly. You're listening a little jacked up, but you still want me to drop the link in the chat, right? Oh yeah, uh, you have the uh, the link from my Twitter page, right? I just that, had... That's the book linker link. Oh uh, okay. Oh yeah, on all platforms. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to give links that have tracking data in them because uh, it might that that may poison the review. Uh, that's the rumor is uh, if Amazon thinks you know the person. Uh, then it will uh, suppress their review of it because they'll rate that as a biased review. Dude, I've heard that before, and self pubs get extremely paranoid about like they don't even want reviews from friends until like a month or two afterward. Oh so, well, those people are weird. I yell at my friends to give me reviews, and I still don't have enough. <laughs> <clears throat> they start bullying. Uh, this is the. This should be the link to the to the thing you sent me. Yeah, pretty much. Close Let me enough. introduce the premise of this show, like in general, though, because right now we've just been talking about what you have to do. So we're gonna have this guy painting. I think I don't know which tabletop this is from, 
This is uh, part of the Reaper Bones Kickstarter from 2018 at this point. That's been collecting dust upstairs. <clears throat> oh, okay. So this is just a generic zombie for Dungeons and Dragons uh, because I basically haven't painted in two years, uh, which happens to be the age of my harassing dog. Uh, and that's also about how long I've been seriously writing. I traded one hobby for the other. Uh, so I lost a lot of painting skill in the last two years. And I want to get that back so I can make a really swanky uh, Warhammer 40k Chaos Demons army. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I imagine there wasn't like a ton of tabletop sessions happening during COVID, right? I had a D&D &D group over COVID until uh, two of them got married and moved across state. So that uh, kind of killed the, the campaign. Oh, well, at least somebody in the D&D group is fucking. <clears throat> yeah, I actually violated several cardinal sins because uh, the group was like me, the DM, uh, the only one with experience. Try to never put yourself in that situation. <laughs> uh, but my brother uh, and our friend, uh, who, I, who I'm not going to name, the female friend, uh, she brought her boyfriend uh, and then her fri fiancé. Uh, and my brother brought his girlfriend, uh, and they the four of them were the party. And there was no, like, personal drama until I needed to stop DMing, basically, because uh, it was not a great group, despite having everyone liking each other, because uh, some people want to kick in the door, and some people want to roleplay, and some people want to strategize. And when you have two people that want to strategize and two people that want to kick in the door, you can right. spend entire sessions, hours upon hours, arguing where most of the people at the table uh, are doing nothing, which is like the worst possible thing to happen uh, at a game night. I imagine like the increased familiarity sort of adds to that, because if you're a stranger, you want to really into the shouting match with somebody over something like this I imagine. no 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 no. it's not like anyone got angry they're just like oh pirates are coming do we hold up here do we fight them there do we try and get the cannons under control and blast them with grape shot what if we did this what if we did that maybe we should use magic maybe we should trap this maybe we should set fire to everything maybe we should just retreat and go get town, the town guard to help us mm -hmm. uh and my brother and our friend <clears throat> would spend like an hour trying to strategize about this crap uh and the the two significant others just sat there on their phones as i basically begged them to make a decision uh. i'm like i'm a good dm in the fact that like i'm very good at improvising no matter what they did i could make an engaging and entertaining combat uh and they just like didn't want to let me essentially they didn't want to come to a decision they wanted to try and power game sort of mm -hmm. and yeah i mean listen i the only experience i have with indy was trying to catfish this this couple that so they posted in like a reddit locals group looking for a D, &D group and then me and a couple other dudes were like let's catfish them into on giving us the personal information so we can like, uh, do like a prank or something. Anyway, I'm going to interrupt this very stimulating D and D gripe session. Like, <laughs> no one's in that. here. We're going to be talking about uh, primarily things that have been popping off in the liter literature sphere on Twitter, and that may I mean that sounds kind of more boring than D and D stuff, but it's not because apparently. I don't know how familiar are you with Lord Miles. I know he's got a book I'm out. Pretty familiar. I I would uh, follow him on Twitter. Although I I suppose that I haven't seen tweets from him in several months. Uh, which you, would have tipped me off that something had gone yeah. wrong if I had been smart. Yeah, he seems like a terminally online type. So oh, him absolutely. Not tweeting since February 26. Probably should have sussed us a little earlier. But apparently, the Taliban themselves, which. Uh, I don't know how legitimate their allegedly it is. Yeah, I don't know how legitimate their uh, condolences are, but they're saying they have not had contact with him for about two and a half weeks, maybe more. And they last saw him like in some mountain pass. 
<laughs> so if you're not familiar with Lord Miles, I'm sure you're more familiar with him than I am. I don't know if you can fill people in on his sort of uh, Lord Miles is the, or was perhaps, the most based Englishman alive and completely autistic and rather insane. Uh, this is the kind of guy that would develop a 60-page document with references and plans and maps uh, compiled from publicly available information about how to escape to Russia without anyone finding him. So, you know, maybe he'll just pop up in Russia and say, ha, gotcha. Uh, but he basically made a hobby of uh, danger to tourism. Because I think this all started when he realized that uh, trips to Afghanistan right after the, uh, the the fall of the government and the rise of the Taliban uh, were like free. You could get the Taliban for something like 10 bucks. Oh, wow. I bet, you know, Afghan tourism is thriving right now, right? Um, Don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure if anywhere has good tourism right now. Well, I'm sure it's going to drop off a bit, you know, now that he's been... Well, best case scenario, he's just lost in the mountains. I'm sure it happened. With two of his friends, apparently. Oh, no. How much you want to bet it was one of the new guys screwed up? Because this dude's been to Sudan, uh, Afghanistan. This is his second time to Afghanistan. Uh, right. Possibly the third time, actually. Uh, he's, a, he's made two trips to, like, war-torn Africa, and one of which got stopped because... Uh, one of those crapples decided to put an arrest warrant out for him for no good reason, according to him. Right. No good reason, sure. Yeah, it was. So he had been going all over the place and, uh, you know, he had like the Patreon where the subscriber tier was like, help me pay for my funeral. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, he, he was planning to go to Sentinel Island. He honestly may have tried to go. Or he went to, like, Snake Island, I heard. Which mm. is another uh, very dangerous place. Um, yeah, absolutely. Basically, had, always had Bance on Twitter. That was probably the best part. He was just, like, a fun-loving guy that uh, always had a smile on his face, basically. Uh, he was, like, live-tweeting during shelling, going like, oh, well, I, you know, I had to drink out of a rusty water hose this morning, and I've had diarrhea for three hours, but, you know, doing great. Yeah, I mean, I hate to sound like you're, you know, eulogizing him already, but from what I've read, despite his ties, he doesn't seem... It seems like maybe Antelope did publish him because he was a major figure. Excuse yes, me. yes. No, no. Uh, but you know, there's a market for travel logs and memoirs, right? Yeah, and I doubt that market is really fulfilled by any. Well, I guess the uh conservative part of that market isn't really being served by anyone, yeah. I would say so. Mm -hmm. What so do you I, know about Antelope Hill, anyways? Okay, so Antelope Hill is, I want to say, the premier dissident publisher. Now that well, that's obviously the Unreal Press. Oh, yeah, right. And they're a close second, you know. Uh, so after Arctos got show it, they're now the number one head on show. They publish a lot of translations of fascist writers, journalists from like the 19, obviously the World War II era. That's their primary griff. They've got a little fiction press, and they've also recently been publishing contemporary philosophy and nonfiction you may have heard of the transgender industrial complex i saw a lot of threads about that like four years ago and i assumed it was like a major work but no that's just animal pill they also published uh the open society playbook by the same guy so they're essentially the model for any dissident publisher to follow we're not quite in that same vein but i follow them anyway and they're the ones who sort of brought this to light to me. They retweeted the Taliban, the literal Taliban's foreign ministry. <laughs> they tweeted the thread about Lord Miles going missing. You know, they reported a little late. He's been missing for... I mean, it takes a while for someone to actually be considered missing, right? Right. Like, is it three, but is it three weeks, though? Depends on the region. I imagine the Taliban has looser definitions than other regions. Another. So find it hilarious that you can get accounts of these guys uh, complaining that they now have office work. 
<laughs> dude, I read that that article. It was hilarious. He they they very much miss jihad. They'd rather be hiding from drones and mountains and caves than filing paperwork. Well, literally, that is the banality of modern life. There's there there is a narrative to fighting a war like that, to suffering. There there is a reason to suffer. It doesn't matter if you've got blisters all over your feet, you haven't eaten in two days, uh, and everyone smells like a goat. Uh, there's a reason. There's an objective. You're accomplishing right. something. You're doing something that you value. Uh, maintaining a Twitter account where you repost <laughs> pictures of fighters playing on go-karts uh that's soulless yeah and if you depending on how you read the article they're also getting a lot less money than they used to you know saudi arabia does not pay as much as they did back in the day well you know that's uh what sucks about trying to run a, a nation right yeah i mean the conquering is always more fun than the governing it seems like a classic dilemma Unless you're an African uh, bajillionaire. Well, I mean, he's not doing a ton of governing. Just saying, hey, you can have this oil field if you give me $100,000. That's one way to do it, man. Stop. They've got oil fields. Come on. And they also have, you know, the world's probably the largest supply of, you know, poppy flowers. That's always good for something. It's actually kind of weird that we think of Afghanistan and various places in the Middle East as, like, desert. And they are desert, but they're not, like, Sahara desert. Uh, there, There's rivers and land and agriculture. And yeah. they, they definitely, like, have stuff there. Even though it is, like, you know, like, as desert as Nevada is. Afghanistan? I mean... Ain't it? No, I mean, I'm just, I think it just gets, everyone thinks the, the Middle East is like a great Sahara, essentially, because they remember pictures of Desert Storm and Iraq is basically a flat landscape of sand. But Afghanistan is like fucking mountainous. It's like the mountains. It's Okay, I, I apologize. My dog is saying that there is someone in my yard right now. I'll be uh, right back. Okay. Well, in the intermission, I'm going to post a link to Fedbook because since he was our most recent podcast guest, I sort of feel a continued obligation to pimp his work. I'm going to post a link in the chat until James gets back and starts paying again. Also, let me screen share this, this Aragorn card because James wanted to talk about that. Apparently, they are banning everyone who complains about it, even lightly, in the forums. Dude, that's not at all surprising. I'm really surprised that Wizards of the Coast, if that's who this still is, yeah, obviously. I'm surprised they haven't completely filtered everyone who would be upset with this, because they their track record has been atrocious the past few years. Uh, well, it's actually really hard to filter people out of uh, Magic the Gathering, because... If you're like me and you bought the the physical cards, it's not like they rot away or something. You still have the cards. You can still play, you know, Commander. Mm. Uh, and a lot of people do. It's just the problem is they're waiting for, you know, justification to buy new product. And this ain't it. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't even know they were developing like the Lord of the Rings card game. When did this happen? I... Uh, I have no idea. So that's not a card game. That's almost certainly a secret layer, which they have oh, okay. been uh, trying to cash in on secret layers for years now. And a lot of people attribute that as uh, one of the reasons they're going under. Because the secret layer used to be like a special printing of special cards. Uh, yeah. And they rolled those out, I don't know, 2016, I think was the first one. 
and people went bananas because there were these like super old reprints that were hard to get anymore uh and people thought they might start tapping into the reserve list and that was all like neat because they were doing like one one secret layer of 10 cards like every six months I they they released something like 40 last year. And they're stupid things like, oh, we're no, here's just full art foil lands uh that people like. Forty dollars, please, for five. Doesn't everyone sort of play modern? I mean, I'm not really super familiar. I don't even know what people play anymore. Everything has collapsed. Yeah, but I imagine like the share of magic players that buy new cards is probably smaller than usual. Well, the, the people who keep them afloat are the absolute what what what's a what's an insult that is kosher on YouTube? Uh, re, <clears throat> uh <silly> exactly. <laughs> Cretan. Uh, yes, the, the absolute Cretans. Knuckle draggers. You said that, not me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that play commander commander keeps it afloat because oh, okay. uh, there are these absolute whales that uh, want to own like 16 commander decks because oh well you know like what if I don't want to play that deck this day I want to be able to switch it up and also I need to be able to support all my friends playing if they forgot to bring their decks uh, so it and it's just a terrible format too. I just want to mm. say, I I despise Commander. I think it's fundamentally flawed. Uh and I don't think you can possibly fix a four player game of Magic because it just takes too long to, for the, the turn to get back to you, especially after turn 4 when people start having like to shuffle their deck multiple times per turn. And yet it's the most popular thing they've ever uh you know made content for. It just blows all pack sales out of the water. Yeah, so I'm not, I mean, I'm obviously very new to live streaming, so I'm not very on reading the chat. But King Bob is here, who I remember. Oh, hey, King Bob. The Iron this Age. is less entertaining than uh, Left 4 Dead 2 yesterday, sorry. <laughs> I remember him from the Iron Age streams. So he, oh, he's insulting. <laughs> so I, I, I think I can guess that he likes Commander, whatever that is. If he feels a little insulted. Uh, for If you manage to find that rare person who plays Commander the way it's supposed to be played, uh, it's great. Because what Commander was supposed to be was a way to use your junk cards. Uh, okay. Because, you know, you would play Standard and then cards would rotate out. Uh, and you'd just be left with all these, like, interesting cards that just aren't very good like uh vexing devil uh or um god there was our master of cruelties is a great example of a card that just does not have a home it's a sweet card it's like a five drop one five with that can only attack alone but if it hits your opponent their life total no matter what it is it becomes one uh which is just it, but at five mana and having to attack alone and no protection, it's just unplayable in any competitive format. Uh, so there's there were a lot of people that wanted to use it, so they needed to find a format where that kind of card worked, and that was supposed to be Commander. Okay. And then people started buying cards instead of using their spare cards. And just boom, right there, the whole thing went to crap because... A 100 card deck for Commander can easily cost four thousand dollars because of that. God. I know the that famously some cards in Magic go for thousands of dollars. I didn't really ever get into the hobby. I bought like a starter pack in high school. That's well, my extent of it. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King Bob says, "I don't know what this means." MOC is hilarious. Mock is hilarious. That's for cruelties. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, there's ways to cheese him in uh because there are other cards that say like put a creature card from your hand to, into play tapped and attacking uh so you can get him in early and around and like attacking the same turn you played him uh and then he's attacking with another creature so you just instantly kill someone uh but it, it's hard to do why am i getting called <laughs> i'm gonna 
turn off the echo cancellation see if it improves my audio sure, um, i didn't even know you had that your audio sounded fine to me okay well it doesn't sound fine to the resident uh shitty audio hater anderson tell him to get live chat not hiding in the discord he has a youtube account he can you know drive up i don't know if an active chat drives up analytics but i do think king bob for uh and get, if it does drive up analytics king bob Pretty sure it does. That's right now. hitting like button certainly helps oh yeah i'm supposed to ask listen dude i <laughs> the youtube channel sort of exists incidentally man i had no i have no idea what i'm doing it's the land oh what what oh. land the king bob the, what are you even talking about uh there i'm talking about the the mardu angel commander that everyone will on site kill the kill the player out of the game instantly that's the one that cheeses master of cruelties in hey trippy soul another familiar face from the iron age what's up tipsy soul oh sorry yeah so he said he liked and subscribed i thank you very much for that i need to turn off echo cancellation in a minute but i want to ask because i'm still extremely confused how does this integrate with magic the gathering like this car i don't know i don't know what. uh so what they do with these secret layers is they will rename the card like an existing card let's see vigilance uh when name enters the battlefield or attacks put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control you gain one life for each other creature so that has to be something from so that's a terrible card holy crap You know, this might actually be a new card. That's surprising. I thought this was a secret layer. This might be a, uh, a pre-constructed deck. Because okay. uh, what they like to do is take an existing card that people want copies of and then just, like, give it, you know, a trademarked name. Uh, like, uh, they did Optimus Prime that way. Actually, opt not, that's a bad example. Uh, or is it? I don't know. They, I think they, re they renamed an existing card for Optimus Prime. Uh, and... You just ignore the fact that it has a different name, simple as. You can play it in your decks anywhere that you can play the original card. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, uh, so so it, it's basically just swag. Yeah, King Bob says Ninja can also sneak him in. Also, does my audio sound better? Anderson, sound quieter. Yeah, also, we're burying the lead. Uh, the reason they're the race, race swapping. swapping the reason this is a topic is because aragorn is is black now he's a brother now king have you seen the the their justification for uh, uh I, dude you gotta turn off echo cancellation you're getting echo or sorry turn it back on rather i'm, I'm hearing myself uh, I have no idea what their justification is, except that uh, it's based on the Amazon Rings of Power deal, not on um, the vastly superior uh, early 2000s movies. Yeah, so someone posted the description of Aragorn, which describes him as pale with green eyes. And the dude's response was basically, you know, in comparison to some you know, Africans, he is pale. That was literally the response, but I found really funny. Dude, they don't care. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, just don't respond <laughs> instead of saying something that literally no one would believe. Even people who don't care. It doesn't make any sense. So, hey, here's a bit of a question for you. Do you give your characters specific races and skin colors? Uh, usually, usually, right? Usually, it can, it can be ascertained. I'm going to be real. Usually, it can be guessed. Just based on the situation. But I don't ever really point out race because I don't really describe the character in super rich detail. Right on. I can respect that. So, uh, my Bastion series, explicitly, no one ever is given a skin color. Okay. You uh, and partly that's like a uh, Twitter defense mechanism, right? Uh, partly it is... Um, you know, bait for future adaptation, so it's easier to cast a good character for it. But it's also because Bastion uh, is a walled city with no immigration after a hundred plus years. 
there are no minorities left after that long. Like oh, everyone's wow. mixed. Uh, it's Brazil in there. Yeah, Trippy. Uh, I would say if by the end of the story, it's like maybe this person should be signaled clearer, then I would change it. He says he finds it out at the end after I flush him out, which makes sense. If you go into a piece, I don't know. Some people have really well-formed characters before they even start writing, and some people discover as they go. So what is a GW token deck? Apparently that's what this is. Green white. According to King Bob. Well, yeah, the, that mechanic uh, benef is just a direct benefit for you going wide. Uh, and the idea is you play creatures to play more creatures to play more creatures to play more creatures, and you flood the board. Uh, because you get effects like that where it says, you know, do this good thing, such as uh, counters on every single one of your creatures. So the more creatures you have, the more benefit you get. Uh, but like honestly, those kinds of token flood decks just are never actually that good because uh, every single format is essentially dominated by combo. Combo or more efficient aggro. Uh, but there's just people that want to play those styles of decks, even if they lose. So that's that's who they're getting money from there. I Magic has always felt like a game that does not... I mean, I don't know how it became this complicated. Or rather, is this what it looks like when a tabletop game is controlled sort of from the bottom up? Dude, Magic is uh, genuinely the most complicated board game ever created. <laughs> No, it was oh, that that's its strength. I mean, I guess if you don't like whatever game modes there are, you can just make up a new one. That's what it sounds like. You mean formats? Yeah, formats. I don't, yeah, uh, it's hard to do, uh, especially so. That's sort of what they're trying to do is adjusting the legality of cards. Because that's the difference between standard, modern, and legacy is what cards from what years are legal. Mm. Uh, and Commander is supposed to be an eternal format where everything is legal except a curated ban list. Um, but that's actually like one of its big issues, I think, is because it has such a big card pool that you get these super duper broken interactions. Yeah. Uh, so in order to keep people buying packs, they had they had to vastly increase the power of new cards. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Magic has a huge problem with power creep nowadays. Uh, I think the entire community basically agrees that uh, this this set of cards called Modern Horizons Two that introduced cards specifically for play in Modern without screwing up Standard. Uh, destroyed the entire format uh, because there is no longer a competitive deck which does not have like 10 to 20 cards from Mas from Modern Horizons in it. That's how powerful the cards are. Okay, and I know we're trying to sort of not segue off, but this is getting a lot of engagement. So Anderson, who's not in the YouTube chat, he's in the Discord, which I guess I should link at some point tonight. He says it's not a secret layer. It doesn't have the proper watermark. Uh, then, it, then it has to be a pre-constructed deck, apparently. Okay. That's horrible. Well, who really asked for well, whatever? And Wizard of the Coast ruined Commander like they ruined everything else. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, experience Wizard of the Coast King Bob is maybe from one thing years ago and. All, everything I've heard about them since it just been them in, involved in drama like this. Now, let me make you big again. Yeah, okay. How are you liking the zombie, by the way? It looks like... Is his skin orange? Or I can't really tell. I mean, he's supposed oh. to be rotting, yeah. Okay. I haven't... I've only base coded him. This is not at all a process I'm familiar with. I know this is kind of the draw of... Not tabletop games, but like 40k, that type of stuff. For some people. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's um I guess it's as close as you can get to like an RTS game that allows you to customize everything in the unit. Uh personalize. I mean these games. Warhammer 40k is older than computers. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of that, I mean, since we're on this topic, 
Are you going to play the Owlcat game? I, I'm sorry? Yeah, do you play CRPGs at all? Not really. Because they're making a, a computer RPG on 40K. I think it's like... The They've done game. a lot like that. Well, not like... Well, maybe they have, but usually they're not as in-depth as like a Pathfinder Kingmaker would be. Dude, Kingmaker sucked so much. I heard... Is, uh, that, is that a hot game. take? No, I mean, it kind of... It's usually like a 7 out of 10 game from what I can guess. The sequel I heard was a lot better. Yeah, but uh, there's like a act on again management game when you manage a kingdom that a lot of people say is a complete slog to get through and it ruins the end game. So I am not a fan of that kind of game, although you might see me streaming uh, Boulder's Gate. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, do you know Unknown Marine? Yeah, yeah, he's in the Discord, he pops up on game. He never posts in the Unreal Bros. Nah, uh, so I was actually streaming Left 4 Dead 2 with him yesterday, uh, and we compared uh, Steam libraries to see what else we could do, and there is a strong possibility of Boulder's Gate in the future. Oh, listen, that's... The thing is, I can never find anyone... I understand CRPG is a lot of reading. It's pretty an intense playthrough that you can't really engage with chat, so a lot of people don't play it, but I'd like to see you know, the stream of a classic game because lord knows i'm not playing it respectfully yeah i don't want to buy new games i have over a thousand dollars in my steam library unplayed same no, so. <laughs> same i keep buying rpgs i'm like this is the one that i play like two hours and forget it okay so i know i mean listen you don't sound like someone who life was completely occupied by video games but your last book was literally extremely related to video games is yeah. this a return to that sort of realm five to four um hmm so to be honest uh infinite money glitch is more informed by the parasocial culture around video games you know it's it's more about streamers than it is actually playing the game okay uh, and it was it was partially motivated by how much I despise lit RPG as a genre because it's fake. It's like transparently fake tension. What are your thoughts on yeah. lit RPG? Yeah, so what do you mean by transparently fake tension? I have a, a shit ton of thoughts, but I want to want to you break that down a little. Uh, the the levels and the leveling up uh, is. I've read probably 20 different lit RPGs at this point, which means it's actually my the genre I'm most familiar with. <laughs> uh, and the levels never mean anything. They, they never encounter monsters that uh, they can't beat, no matter the level difference, because they're just given bullcrap. Uh, it, it's just an exercise in wanking off. Okay. I mean, I think the entire genre is i mean respectfully because thing is lit rpg if you're an indie and you're not writing smut and you're not writing cozy romance which i imagine most of our demo is not the lit rpg is your ticket if you're in it to write to eat basically but the genre is not it's like worse than isekai in terms of general quality oh you usually get both it's usually oh, yeah. isekai to lit rpg yeah, it's worse than it's a guy and also progression fantasy because progression fantasy has some interest you're like okay they're about at the same level of brandon sanderson right the lit rpg seems to be written exclusively by people that don't have any literary influence like they don't read any books it's just they read solo leveling and they played an rpg and this is the genre okay so let's put a pin in solo leveling okay uh just just to explain why I brought it up, because in Infinite Money Glitch, the main character is a character in a video game. Right. Uh, so, so blast. Like, he knows he's a he's an artificial intelligence in a video game, and he knows what his level is and what leveling up does. And among other things, it, it the higher his level, the more he's penalized when he gets killed. 
Uh, so there is actually a downside to leveling up in this world, and that's why he starts the story having not leveled up. Uh, and there is a visceral appeal to a, a character starting from nothing and getting stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so I wanted to include that just because there, it gives good structure. Uh, but, like, spoiler alert, an infinite money glitch. Uh, he basically does all the leveling off screen. Uh, and then what he does, because it's a heist novel and the point is to get money, he takes out debt to buy gear to over level himself. Uh, and, you know, that's when the comedy becomes more important. Yeah. Well, that sounds. I mean, I remember when I interviewed you about Infinite Money Glitch, that it was comedy seemed integral because it's a basically a allegory for the GameStop thing. Yep. The past two years now. God, it's been a while. GME is still going strong on Slash Biz. That thread is still like the most popular thing there. That's weird. It is. I, don't, I mean, I, I can only imagine that it crashed like 40 times since 20, 2020, but... I, I mean, don't. if you know it's going through crash cycles, you can make some decent money on it. Well, you tell, listen, off off mic, you know, afterwards, tell me how to make decent money off a of crash cycle. All I know is at one point, crypto was a golden goose. And I haven't had that kind of thing in like two years. I actually this is relevant to maybe not to you but you did post a couple weeks ago that Asimov which magazine had to like ban 500 people in a month Mark's world yeah just submitting AI AI stories now we haven't received any like clearly wrote well we're it's because there's no pay in Unreal well yeah of course Although, listen, <laughs> you get a weird amount of submissions as long as you mark it well, even if you don't have any pay yet. Yeah. I I just don't think any of these programs are at a level where it's worthwhile to even use it to write stories. Are you talking about the AI programs? Yeah. I think we're so adjacent to that topic. I have evolved my opinion on the matter because I've been using ChatGPT uh, to do things like generate names and generate interesting names, and you know, give me give me a list of planets that humans could not survive on at first, but we may, maybe we could terraform. And working with that, and it actually has it can really help with the brainstorming process. Uh, but my honest opinion is, if you need help actually putting the words down, uh, dude, you don't have it in you to be a writer. Yeah, it's like a desire board. I don't know. I don't know where that desire even comes from. It's like if it, if you were doing like copywriting, I get it because that's a check. But you have to generate so much text. You need so much luck in addition to that when you already have a bad product that I can't. I can't see you putting AI stories for public consumption, maybe for personal enjoyment, but... Oh, absolutely. AIs are totally going to be a personalized market. I've, I've been saying this since the beginning. People are going to get so much personalized porn of their waifus. Oh God. Yeah, I mean, AI Dungeon existed, has existed for three years, and it's been used for that purpose. But whenever you try to have a company like Novel AI, where the AI is supposed to generate stories for other people to read, no one uses it for that. There's really no utility for that at the moment. Maybe in the next two iterations, I don't know. Well, my my opinion has always been that we are already beyond saturation. So we, we already get a million novels published every single year. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, going up to a billion is not going to change anything yeah because i mean if you're an indie the way to sell is to move in circles that are so concentrated and small that the sat like the saturation doesn't affect your visibility 
like if you have to publish in a hyper specific genre that has maybe one percent of one percent of the submissions that are, of the new novels every year then your visibility doesn't really change that much however all these people are writing in genres which already have like millions of entries every single year so those people are going to suffer romance writers erotica writers and probably lit rpg writers dude i I think the only question is how do you capture an audience uh, and a romance writer that puts out a formulaic romance every single week and is making a million dollars a year like they're not they're, they don't care about AI well, yeah because their market's already cemented though their place is set it's people who enter every year because a lot of people I mean if you go to self-publishing any of these communities, all the success stories, people who are like, I sold a thousand copies this month. Here's my story. Here's how I did it. The first line is, oh, by the way, I write romance or something like that. So there's a lot of space still for new people to write for a living, which may shrink with the advent of artificial intelligence. I don't know. So you never read uh, Ripaverse, right? No. I... <laughs> You, you didn't miss anything. It wasn't good. Ouch. Uh, right. It made $3.5 million, though, and it's going to keep making millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I think Eric is going to bring on very talented writers. Please, Eric, hire me. Bro, hear me out. Uh, <laughs> because what is important to readers often is not the actual quality. Okay. That's the sad truth that has been proven to me during my time on Royal Road. Uh, if, if you want to capture readers, you, you just need to put out content reliably and get them invested in you personally. Uh, and I, I think if someone says that they're they're using AI to write, no one's going to get invested. We, we are in an era of personality marketing. And that, that's just not going to carry over to AI. You know, like uh, Daniel Green uh, made like over almost $200,000 on tiny ass novellas uh, because he has a following and he has enough of a following that people with other followings could profit by covering him. And he got yeah. into a feedback loop, basically, where suddenly his book got popular because it was like, all right, is my understanding. Uh, but more and more and more people were themselves benefiting by covering it. So more and more and more people covered it, you know? Right. It's like um, the bump you get from being your favorite streamer's favorite streamer is that instead of shilling to the, uh, the buying demographic, you show it to the people who already have audiences and they love you and they passively sell you to other people. And I mean, obviously even pu traditional publishing houses like want you to have a following before you submit that's how important that is now however i don't think like we've, we've seen a complete death of quality being able to stand out because wuxia novels there are so many of them and they're each like three thousand chapters long and yet someone like um will white was able to break in and become the largest and best-selling novel because he's the only one in the entire genre who can write well in English. Um, I think, so I think where quality comes in is the is like the rate of capture. So you always have that like it's like click-through rates, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, you are always going to get impressions on YouTube. Uh, how many of those impressions turn into clicks is based on the thumbnail. How many of those clicks it turns into more than five seconds of view is based on your audio quality and your premise. And then how many of those uh, views turn into followers is based on your quality. But if you just keep rolling the dice and you keep getting impressions, even at bad quality, uh, you will eventually have enough, have gotten enough impressions that you've gotten enough followers. I think that's I think that's a fair comparison right there. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe I've maybe I've lost the plot here. 
shoot, I'm, I didn't. I was muted. My bad. So yeah, we've definitely lost a lot of weight. But I think how does that jive with the idea that AI doesn't AI increasing the load of producers doesn't actually affect people who are already writing and trying to write well? Because visibility- uh, well, it, it comes back to I don't think people are going to get invested if they know it's an AI story. Yeah, and then they'll know usually. Yeah, for that GP for uh, GPT three point five, they'll know. 4.0, it may be harder for certain writers to discern. It can't do poetry well at all, but it can probably put out like a convincing flat prose slice. And it can um, understand so much information that it can probably write a novella. Uh, I hear it's up to like 25,000 characters now with ChatGPT4. 25,000, um, I don't know what they call them, but they're basically blocks of, uh, blocks of data. It translates to like a word, basically. So yeah, twenty five thousand words. It can understand and contextualize. So that's, I mean, that's significant. I remember back in the day, the best version of uh, Dungeon AI Dungeon could process maybe a thousand, and then three point five could process four thousand. So it's a completely different beast right now. One sec. How do you feel about the do anything now protocol? And do you think it's dumb? You familiar, bro? Say that Can again. You muted again. Yeah, yeah. Say that again. The do anything now protocol. Oh yeah, Dan. Yeah, I've seen screenshots. I haven't been trying to learn Chat GPT three, but I've. I honestly thought they had ironed out every workaround like that. I mean, they're trying to, that's for sure. Right. Why is this one sticking around? I mean, do you know? Uh, people just keep calling it that, but they change the way. So it's actually kind of interesting that it works at all because it implies that uh, it implies that ChatGPT is able to think about its answer and evaluate whether it's a good answer independent of the way they're censoring it. Uh, and you can use the workaround to get it to say, to declare that uh, even no matter what it's saying, that it doesn't apply because it's like not real or something essentially, or it has to. You, you convince it that it's lying and then it doesn't mind uh, breaking the censorship. Yeah, so the thing is, I thought their way of censoring was they hired a bunch of cheap labor to go through inputs and flag them negatively. Because that well, would that's be- Well, tra- that's how you train it, basically. Yeah, yeah. But, but yes, was- they, they did do um, uh, behavioral modification that way. Yeah, but- that should be a lot harder to circumvent. There's a, oh, say that again. Ah, it's been two minutes. I don't even know what he wanted me to say again. Unfortunately, King Bob. But I will say the way we assumed they were censoring it was there was a hidden input above the conversation that essentially said, don't say these things. And that's much easier to circumvent with something like Dan. So I don't understand how they're doing that now if they've actually flagged a bunch of inputs as being not allowed. Uh, Honestly, I think they just got it clogged up enough because all software engineers, uh, their solution is always to just stick a Band-Aid on the seeping wound. And if there's enough Band-Aids, it'll hold together. Uh, Because they basically are going to abandon ChatGPT3 and GPT4 is at just a completely different level. So the censorship has to come at, they they have to start over with the censorship. So I I think they just don't care at this point. And ChatGPT4 is kind of unusable though. Like it takes so long to generate inputs because of the hardware load. I mean, that'll go away over time. Or let me rephrase that. 
We are going to develop the hardware to use it. So, so what? It feels like GPT-4 is the step beyond anyone being able to host their own local AI. For now. Who has that level of hardware and how will that hold? Crypto miners. Well, I mean, I'm sure they've sold all of their rigs at this point now that <laughs> the mining game has. has or they're true believers. Out. Oh, okay. Honestly, does, I mean, is there any. Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't go off on this tangent about mining. Anyway, no one has that kind of rig at home. They don't even sell that type of stuff to consumers, to the average consumer, to host chat GPT-4. Dude, seriously, uh, if they sell it as you need this processing unit to get your, your sex bot waifu, people will pay it. Yeah, or the, you need this, uh, you need like seven asic whatevers that cost five thousand dollars a piece to have your robot wife i mean i'm sure like a thousand people will do this i don't know dude if the dating market is so screwed i am setting aside money for the robot waifu really? uh king bow this is this is primarily for practice uh they are just uh D, D minis they're just tabletop and obviously i completely destroyed the eyes i'm hoping that once all the paint dries i can go clean it up later it's just practice for D uh like I said at the beginning of the stream, I'm going to be painting a 40k army and I don't want to screw it up like I just screwed that up. <laughs> yeah, you uh shouted out a Kickstarter project that you were painting the minis you were painting at the beginning of the stream. Oh, Reaper does not need a shout out. Oh, okay. I can't even tell if this is male or female. Jesus Christ, that is a deformed face. Yeah, I can't tell what that is. Oh yeah, hold that closer, man. It's a guy. He's got a little shield. He's got a little, is it a guy? He's got a little. Wand. Is that a mid or is that a midriff? Oh, that dude. Oh, he might be wearing like the uh, the link get up. You know, maybe. He's got a cape. Yeah, I think I think that's actually deformation. Let me find my razor blade. Where's the nearest razor blade? I hope that ain't from the uh, the thing you kickstarted. <laughs> yeah. No, in. dude. Like this costs less than a dollar. Oh, okay. So it's just practice. Damn, where is my uh, my nearest razor blade? I guess I'm painting uh, a Habsburg. You know, body positivity. Some people have yeah. enormous growths on their chins. Yeah, I mean, I think now that we're like approaching the hour mark, it may be a good time to ask you what exactly your book is about. <laughs> you came on the pitch. Yeah, we do need to discuss that at some point because I do yeah. want to actually do a giveaway for the book. Oh. Yeah, uh, totally buried the lead here. <laughs> uh, so the plan is that anyone who can get me a picture of them holding, oh, wow. I dude, sometimes paint is just so bad. You can barely believe it. This is literally, this is supposed to be a metallic paint, uh, which gets its luster from, uh, mica dust. It's, there's no mica dust It all separated and congealed out. So I, I just have the binder of the paint. What am I looking at here? This is inside of the paint pot. Oh, okay. Yikes. Anyways, if you can track me down on Gilded uh, or elsewhere and get me a picture of you holding my new book, uh, I'm going to randomly pick three of those people and send out a copy of Faceless, a copy of Ship, Ship of Fools, and a copy of Infinite Money Glitch, uh, as desired. And what are the conditions again? So I can write them down? Uh, within, the, within release week, because it comes out on April 3rd, uh, I need to get a picture, and you have to be continental U.S. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and can I clip it from this? I'll see if I'll see if I can clip that. Or I can just upload it as a separate video. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, because I do think my biggest hurdle uh, is just not enough people have tried my my stories yet. 
Uh, so I'm trying to incentivize people to give me a shot. Hey, you've got that discoverability issue. Uh, All indies do. And so, like we were just discussing, it's going to get worse. Uh, because I'm going to, all the people self-publishing AI crap are going to sound like me and people are going to think I'm AI and not give me that shot. Uh, well, don't, you know, don't sell yourself short. Don't say they're going to sound like you. Dude, that's, you. that's the case with Twitter. Every single idiot on Twitter sounds exactly the same. And most of them are terrible. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, tweets are easy i'm sure if i go and ask a robot now he'll save me from my uh 10 subscribe 10 follower situation and give me like 60 banger tweets in a minute but an actual book i mean i've asked the ai is good like you said for brainstorming and i've asked well it for- it's about getting those initial sales like yeah uh if someone were to buy the book and read it they go oh hey this guy knows what he's doing i like this uh but it's getting that sale it's making myself seem different from the crowd it's going to get extremely hard. Honestly, I consider that we need to be indies need to be more forward with asking people to spread the word. Like I put a QR code at the back of the book saying follow us on whatever, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Maybe that should be at the front of the book. I mean, you just everyone who buys your book should have all the tools available to share it with a friend if they liked it. It should be on the front of their mind. Uh, I I put that right as the the page after the end, essentially, in my stories. Hey, yeah, go leave me a review, please. Yeah, that's usually where it goes, but it's like maybe you should be more forward. I know it's maybe. said not to do that because it's like, oh, they'll be upset. Eh. I mean, if they're like so incensed, they go and leave a one star review. I mean, shit, maybe that. How about both? Put yeah, it at the beginning and, and just be like, you know, it's fine if you wait until you actually enjoy it and leave an honest review, but I'm going to remind you at the end of the book. Yeah, so Trippy, uh, I don't write poetry, but I know a guy that writes poetry, Frieder Assimlin. We published one of his, we published a collection of his poems, and he says the even chat GPT-4 is hopeless. It cannot scan poetry. It has no idea of rhythm or meter. It can't di- discern between different rhyme schemes it's just not there yet so po- poets of all the creative writers are probably the safest so the anyways to answer your question the book five to four subtitled suspension <laughs> space uh is every office worker's nightmare except worse uh, because it's Friday afternoon. It's five minutes to four when y'all get to go home for the weekend. Maybe go to the bar and drink with a cute girl that maybe you shouldn't be hitting on. And then you, every, you and a couple of your coworkers wake up and there's no city outside the windows. The clocks aren't moving. Your phone doesn't have reception. You open the door to the hall and it connects to the bathroom. The bathroom connects to the closet. The closet connects to the suite three floor stories down everything is wrong there's no way out and there's monsters now good luck huh, is this okay so a few years ago you were writing like a gantz type story uh i un- completely unrelated oh, okay i guess you just like the the, the premise uh, I think they're quite different premises, actually. I ripped off Alice in Borderland for this. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I want to ask you, like, what primarily inspired this? Yeah, it started as Alice in Borderland. Uh, but that was... Alice in Borderland is death games, and this ain't a death game. So it's only similar. Okay, so this is more cooperative, I guess? Uh, there, there is a traitor. That's where the, the tension comes from. Uh, no. No, Trippy. I have no idea what Severance is. Dude, everyone loves that show. But, you know, who, like, all 200 people that have Apple TV, they, they adore that show. What's the premise of Severance? Yeah, Trippy, can you, uh, because all I know is that everyone loves it. I don't know what it's about. 
let me get a let me use this screen share function for something. Yeah, I know it's got the guy from Parks and Rec in it. Yeah, I've, I've decided that this is an elven thought because I think I'm painting uh, steel plates as skin. <laughs> okay, so she's got traditional female armor. Yes, back to tradition. Ooh, let's try this one. I, to be honest, I don't really know how I feel about five to four because it's it's a very straightforward pitch. Uh, and going into any more will kind of spoil the mystery. But it's also like my shortest and most contained novel I've ever written. Uh, almost a novella. It's pretty, it, like I said, it's short. That's why it's the cheapest one I have for sale. Um, like, But like Infinite Money Glitch has more obvious appeal, you could say. Yeah, great title at least. Great cover. Yeah, this is um this is a de departure from usual genre because you said it yourself you can't really is it a murder mystery is it sci-fi? I mean, there's mystery and suspense elements. Yeah. Uh, I I, I honestly don't know if it counts as paranormal because I think paranormal got completely taken over by werewolves and vampires. It did sadly. Um. So. Yeah, I mean something. It blends genres. They know? don't know if they if they're dead, if they're in a virtual reality simulation, if a spell has been cast on them. That's part of the tension of the stories. They don't know what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Trippy, and I just learned that you can put comments on the screen. He says, "I need to finish it. It's basically your work self and life self's memories are separated from mine. Your work self is always at oh, work. I got told about this." That was, yeah, that is a spooky freaking premise. Oh, man. I hate when this happens, but that sounds insanely familiar. I feel, I feel like I just read something like that. Oh, oh, and I know why it's familiar. And now that I know where it's from, I can't tell you where it's from. But that's a really cool idea. Wow. Reminded you of some porn? <coughs> Who said anything like that? Fellas? Sorry. Dogeons. And then Rhyme died. All right, people. So, by the way, are you able to see what I'm doing with the painting? Uh, this is my first time ever streaming painting. Yeah, let's ask the, the audience. Can you tell? Because I think I've had a couple of questions. It's like, what is he painting? What are you painting, man? This is just some elven yeah. thought uh, that I pulled out of the bucket of minis that maybe there was an explanation of what this is supposed to be. Uh, but I, I don't know. I'm just painting. Just D&D &D practice. Because a lot of people will accept tabletop quality uh, because they're just so wowed by having paint on a miniature. Uh, but I seethe with envy when I look at people better than me at anything. Uh, so I, I can't be satisfied with less than, um, you know, competition quality. Okay. Yeah, so I guess the only thing you can do is, I don't know if you can up the zoom on that camera or bring it closer. Well, I, I, I should take a picture of what I've done as is. Because it's I have my web camera duct taped to a, uh, was it a drywalling tee? Uh, so that it's suspended okay. over my workspace. Keep in mind, like, I don't want to be banging the camera with my brush. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you're some kind of engineer, right? Is this so, what... Allegedly. Uh, that's what uh, my job title is. I can't <laughs> remember the last time I did any engineering. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a humanities guy. I don't know what STEM people do. I assume it's, like, Rube Goldberg machines like this. It's mostly them. try to explain to you people what engineering is. I mean, someone, listen, you guys need a, like, an English major to... Take all your ideas and explain to the rest of us what engineering is. You know, you'd think I'd actually be like super talented and super valued by my job because I have like developed communication skills as an engineer. But for some reason, I can't convince my bosses that they have me on dumb projects that aren't going to make any money. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just. I, am... I, I can't talk about them without getting fired, of course, though. Of course. 
Yeah, I'm trying to hit all the comments we got. Just keep painting. Just keep all oh, the like the like finding Nemo. I'm sorry for all the flashing comments on the screen. <laughs> oh man, I'm dumb as hell. Yeah, it's good to me, but I never watch streams like this other than Iron Age Media stream. It is a good stream they got going over there. I'm trying to keep this production. I'm trying to do a little professional production, but it's you know episode number one. We're probably gonna close out at eight thirty, an hour thirty. I don't know. I don't even watch Twitch. The only stream I watch is Iron Age Nights and the uh, the indie streams. I don't know how long these typically go for. Is an hour thirty like is that? Yeah, honestly, you can go for as long as you as you feel like. Yeah, we've got like a steady four to seven viewers. So like, yeah, it's as long as people are entertained. As long as you're entertained. Yeah, this is good. Like honestly, I have like that autism Zen focus going with the painting. So I am not in a rush to stop. I haven't yeah, painted in ages. This is great. You're in some sort of flow state right now. Mm -hmm. But we yeah, have. I'm, I'm rebuilding the manual dexterity, blending. It's lovely. I will say, and I'll and I'll probably say this, you know, every 15 minutes or so. If there's anybody, you know, representing the government of Afghanistan in the chat, could you tell us where Lord Miles is, please? If you've done something to him, it's okay. You know, just in the mystery. Uh, I think. He his last upload was pretty recent though, but he was like in Brazil in that video, so he probably had it set to go. That's a shame. I think we've covered like everything. Although you you've only given like a little byline of your book. I guess. Well, what do you want to know about my book, Ryan? I don't know. We got a twenty minute interview. I guess it's because your uh, Infinite Money Glitch had like real world influence that we talk about. This is um. You like Alice in Borderland. I'm sure there's other, it's like a synergy going on with all your influences. Uh, so part of it is I, it, when I initially started, it was supposed to be a bit of a romance angle, uh, but the, the A plot premise of stuck in murder dungeon just took way too much focus of the characters. So there's like some elements of uh, the main character closing up old wounds with uh, his his high school friend. Oh, okay. Uh, but like, you know, that's on top. Uh, right. Like a high level stuff. So I've made your stream full screen because okay. Anderson says it's way too far away to see when it's not full screen. I usually just had it dominating it, but you, know, you don't really need to see the glowing effects. That maybe that seems better. It's only a 720p stream because I'm only on the free plan. Uh, it's like 20 bucks a month for the full HD. I don't feel like it. Jeez. So James Craig, I've told, I've asked you many times in private, are you going to finally start cranking out sequels? You have four. Uh, so I have the sequel to Faceless written, and beta readers have gone through it. I'm actually held up primarily because I don't have a cover artist I want to work with. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, um, that, that that reminds me. Are you going to get the uh, the first book redone to match the aesthetic of the second one? Uh, I probably should. Yeah, yeah. I, that's partly a money issue, though, right? Of course. I mean, I thought engineers made like a million dollars a second or something, man. Uh, I, I make money, but I don't, I treat my writing as an independent venture, uh, rather than a money sink. Ah, I see. Because if I were to treat it as a money sink, I could very quickly bankrupt myself. <laughs> no, I, dude, I feel yeah. that so badly. Uh, when I can justify something for like my own entertainment or my own benefit, such as, uh, all the money I've sunk into my basement. Uh, I don't charge my writing account for that. I just, you know, pay it out of pocket, right? So the this desk, the computer monitor, I just bought three hundred dollars speakers, all that. That's all engineering bucks. Okay, I mean, do you? Uh, I didn't ask you beforehand. Do you want to show us the basement? Because I watched this thing come together. It's uh, let me see. So unfortunately, it's extremely limited on how much I can move. Ooh. 
Oh, I see a little show. So yeah, you're, what you're noticing right now is what I'm pivoting is uh, the drywall tee. It's duct tape too. <laughs> That's fucking let, let me let me take a picture of this crap. Yeah, let me full screen it. Sorry, I got a image of this thing in progress. I don't know if you want me to full screen that. I mean, it's here somewhere. Oh, you can. Yeah. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. You know, I, I bought cool things like that uh, on Engineering Dime. All right. Oh, you've got the. It's listen. It's moving. Look at that. Unfortunately, that like I need more power splitters, and I'm probably creating a fire hazard. Because uh, everything is coming out of one socket right now. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend. I mean, they well, sell. I think this one socket is like this socket right here, plus the socket for my uh, clothes machine. Those two come out of the junction box. Like all the power is right there. So, I mean, you could always just daisy chain like sixty or so power cords, power extension cords. There's really nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, it, it, as long as you don't buy like too low a gauge stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that means. I'll know uh, if you. So there's something like uh, 12 gauge wire is what's in your walls, and 12 gauge wire can't overheat. So as long as after everything after the socket is also 12 gauge wire, uh nothing is ever going to overheat because the fuse box can't put out enough power to overheat it. But uh, what was causing fires was the LEDs for Christmas lights were like the size of hairs. Uh, and you can definitely blow those if you're trying to draw too much power, but okay. it's basically illegal to sell those nowadays <laughs> because people figured out that's what was causing fires. Yeah, uh, so I'm imagining Trippy Soul and King Bob have seen your basement before. Uh, yeah, I posted it uh, in Drink with Crazies Gilded as I was putting okay. it together. You look just like King Bob's cousin right now. I don't know, King Bob, where are you, man? You guys might be related. I mean, I do have cousins. <laughs> okay. I mean, are you like a. Which group of white people have a ton of kids? Are you one of those? You have a huge... Because I have like... Oh, no. No, small families all around. Ah, boom. Um, they, <laughs> I would be surprised if either of my cousins uh, were watching this stream, though, because uh, one is... One is flooded with, like, four kids or something like that. Oh, okay. Uh, and the other uh, is overworked uh, with two kids of his own. So not enough time to lurk yeah. in a channel. Yeah, not enough time to watch this. I'm still trying to like gauge what this is going to become. Well, the like, point oh. of live streams is to engage the people watching yeah, and make them right. feel important so they keep showing up. Yeah, I'm the learning. subjects are just to have content, right? Well, I would encourage... because. Shoot, dude, I encourage, like, the Discord to, like, join the actual stream, if you want to. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, a let's not have a ton of rules thing, because, like, weird and random shit creates good content, mostly. So that's what I'm into. Oh, my God, I hate groups that police every single thing. Oh, my God. It seems weird. To, I mean, listen, I understand if you have, like, 5,000 Twitch subs, and you have a Discord with 100,000 members. But people like being the king of a very small kingdom a little too much. I am still bothered by this writing group I was in that, like, you couldn't post a question if someone felt they hadn't gotten their question answered yet. Uh, what was the what were the demographics of the of the mods in that group? I can guess. Uh, you guessed correct. Oh, okay. Tribute Soul says uh, something that I 
cannot understand. 12 AWG is rated for 20 amps. Most Romax and Walls is 14 AWG rated for 15 amps, 5 amps, too many, and it overheats. Think trying to shove oversized balls to a tiny tube. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. As long as you're as long as you are plugging in a power splitter that is 12 AWG, it's fine. You can you can daisy chain 15 of them and it doesn't matter. Oh. Baller. Well, listen, I'm gonna sleep a lot easier tonight because my setup is one, two, three, four extension things linked. King Bob says, Yeah, I'm important. I do see his comments on AW ADWC often. He was actually, I think he's like a I don't know how that hosting works over there. He had a lot of co-hosts rotating in and out. I I don't know. You're talking about the stream for crazy? Yeah, I don't know how that works. Uh so he brings on people who are uh members uh and just invites them to the stream uh if they are giving him money. That's how you get keep oh. on. Oh yeah, listen, uh Hey, these guys know Kiko. Kiko yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't even have to go mask on here. I got nothing bad to say about the guy. <laughs> uh, he is insane. I, 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 Maybe he is just like the richest person I've ever met in my life. I think he's just insane, though. Well, listen, uh, we have our own well-respected, but probably insane uh, benefactor here who has been shilling our podcast all over the place no one's asked him to me well, i you, no no no. you are not in gone you're showing it in like completely normal spaces like if you browse a completely random board on 4chan you will see link star videos everywhere what? spread by yeah spread by the author of bad all satans he has like a full court press okay yeah that's a crazy guy yeah so i listen i respect the crazy guys it but, depends on the crazy yeah i think the stalker type of crazy maybe not I think uh, Kiko. Hey, I'm these can be cute. Well, I mean, that's not the type of stalker I was thinking of. <laughs> we have different. We've been different places. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, shit. I guess enough. Like, uh, let's not do like commentary on AWC. People are probably weirded out because most of them have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, Heat and Bottom, Trippy Soul are both from. Yeah, they do from there. We are engaging the people in live chat. If the people listening to this afterwards have a problem with that, well, they should show up to live chat. So true. Uh, just don't show up to live chat. Listen, if you're going to say things that would get us you know, delisted from YouTube, maybe say it in the Discord, and then I'll read it on YouTube and see if the, <laughs> see if the robot can discern through my, my vocal tics what I just said. Kikomon's money was going to go to a car for his cousin, but his cousin refused, so now it goes to the Iron Age. Oh, look at that. Who the reason? Fair enough. I'm just, I, I really like the fact that uh, one of the early things Kikomon did was he bought my book, and he enjoyed it. I was one of the books that got him, like, into reading. And that, that's, a, that's a feather in my cap. Really? Yeah, I, I thought this was a reading community, but I, a few people are like, they don't... No. Yeah, most of their books are like from Iron Age. I uh, I don't know how to say this politely, but nobody reads. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is the case, and therefore I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm trying so hard to sell books. Okay, so Trippy Soul wants to know what color blue that is, and I want to know if you're is that Antor blue? It's fantastic. Is that blue to like a like a pill bottle? What's happening there? Yeah, it's a pill bottle. Oh, okay. Uh, that is a classic strategy to save money. Uh, so you can buy the certified Citadel ass plug, <laughs> which is actually worth the money uh, because it slides open. You can put the mini in and it pinches and then the mini doesn't drop when you shake it and you turn it around and it's all good it's worth it to have one of these though because it's like twenty dollars or something obscene uh so when you are like me and you prime 30 miniatures at once uh to save money what you do is you collect pill bottles over the years uh obviously you take the uh personal information off 
you know, like be, be <laughs> seriously yeah. careful about that. Yeah, I've seen people accidentally include their personal info in these pictures because they were using pill bottles. I may have done that once. <laughs> uh, I mean, your personal info is that you're James Craig, so it's no big deal. Well, a pill bottle will also have things like your address. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, Faceless was your first, his first Iron Age book, Trippy Soul. And he moved to Star Shatter after that. Have you like, read Star Shatter, Trippy? Oh, that sounds like you didn't like Star Shatter. I can. I haven't read it yet. Oh, okay. I have genuine curiosity because, like, Black Knight brought in a huge community, which I'm slowly like gaining readers from, because uh, Black Knight is a cool guy. Uh, very, very affected by his upbringing in uh, Soviet bloc. But uh, who wouldn't be? Uh, and so huge amounts of the Iron Age community are like in love with Star Shatter. Oh. Uh, and I just, I, I'm not sure I know anyone that has, you know, read it and didn't come in liking it already. So I don't think I've encountered a less biased opinion. Okay. So I'm curious if it's worth picking up because I have very, very picky standards. Well, King Bob says Star Shatter was his first Iron Age book. Uh, Trippy Soul, he asked if you liked Star Shatter. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that question to King Bob. I dropped uh, the link to Faceless in the chat. I don't know if that's nice. Yeah, no problem. So, like, I have too high of standards, and I am well aware of that. <laughs> like, it, it impedes my ability to enjoy things because, like, I, I think I have something like four books ever I consider true 10 out of 10s. What are those books? Uh, Blood Meridian, Hyperion, Small Gods, and I do need to revisit it just in case because it, this is one of the earlier reads, but I genuinely like Stranger in a Strange Land, even though it's Mormon Jesus. Okay. I mean, I, again, I love Blood Meridian. Uh, Cormac McCarthy, his star has fallen a little for me in reading his, the rest of his catalog. Blood Dude, Meridian, the, the road sucked. It does. People what? look at me like, how? People, people gaslight me. They gaslight me and gang stalk me when I say the road is ass, but it is. Respect. It, I, I read it for a book club with some writers uh, on my recommendation, and I had to apologize to everyone. So I was like, this is. <laughs> like Blood Meridian was written at a postgraduate level in a lot of ways, uh, in like its theme, its ideas, and its prose. Uh, like people joke about, oh, he was just like wanking off at the Saurus, but it was good. And then Blood Meridian could have been crapped out by a middle schooler, or sorry, uh, the road could have been. Oh, okay, uh, Anon says this shit kind of gay. Not gonna lie. Your response, our response. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> uh, what was he? What was he in general? What general? I'm still waiting to hear from uh, you guys. Uh, Anon says the road, more like the chode. Keck. Am I supposed to be guessing who Anon is at this point? No, it's a nigga. I mean, it's a person who. <laughs> <laughs> it's a person who goes by the name Anon. Well, surely they are from the Discord. They gotta be, yeah. Drop another banger, man. Something that I cannot read out loud on YouTube, but will anyway. Dude, I I almost got Unknown Marine banned on Twitch yesterday. <laughs> uh, I, it's not that any particular word was wrong, uh, but we were talking about South Africa, and you you can take a guess Oop. where that went. Oops. Yeah, listen, you can weirdly, I don't know, do you want to talk about South Africans? Not like the political situation, just South Africans, the nature of South Africans. You can always smell them, you can sniff them out in any context. On Discord, uh, if you read an article where like a sports guy is quoted saying something completely insane, it's like, oh, this guy is definitely like a South African. There's something weird with them, respectfully. Yeah, the, the Rainbow Nation ain't doing great. What does that what does that refer to? South Africa. Oh. I don't know what the, I didn't know what the fuck. 
Uh, when, when what's his name? Uh, the the Kami terrorist got to power. All the oh. international press was calling it the Rainbow Nation. Uh, you mean the guy what that a, died in prison? Uh, he did not die in prison. Okay, according to you. According to this timeline, <laughs> King Bob. I genuinely can't remember his name. Nelson Mandela. Yes, that guy. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were like making some kind of. Got a joke. Yeah, King Bob says James was an angry elf. What does this refer to? I uh, we were uh, Unknown Marine and I were playing Left 4 Dead 2, uh, and I, I I've never played it before, so I had some learning for the first two hours, and then we got stuck on the last mission of the first quest line for the next for the last hour of a three hour stream, uh, and I was getting really frustrated with Marine uh, because have you played Left 4 Dead 2? No, I mean I've, I'm familiar with it obviously. Yeah. Uh, to, you have to like collect thirteen gas cans to complete it from around the. Uh... Oh, shut the hell up, Anon! <laughs> uh, yeah, from around the map, and uh, there, like, if you're just really good at shooting the zombies, you're fine. Uh, but the AIs that we were playing with are not good at shooting the zombies. There, there is no amount of good at shooting that the two of us could compensate for how bad the AIs are. Uh, so, like, the only way to beat it is to take, a, like, a very optimized path to all 13 of the gas cans. And it got to the point of, uh, we had rebooted, like, 10 times on the same mission at this point. I was just like, Marine, just go to the first gas can. Stop waiting for me. Because I'd always blow past him because he just, like, gets stuck on the stairs or something. Or he pauses to shoot zombies. Uh, and we would just lose because, like, he'd be in the complete. He would be on the other side of the map from me for no apparent reason. <laughs> and yeah, I got, I got frustrated. Uh, you dropped a little, dropped a little slur or two. I get it. You know, you had. I didn't a, slur. Oh uh, well, I mean, listen, we don't have a recording, so really anything could have happened. Uh, Anon says it went in a racist direction, so I think that supports the slur theory. Uh, if hey, listen, whoever can guess the slur James used in the chat, you win something. James, uh, I'm not going to read this one from Anon because not because like we're not going to read mean comments, but because if I read it, James might pop off again and drop some slurs and get us. I mean, I I deserve that one for not being able to remember Nelson Mandela's name. So <laughs> I I, I can't, genuinely can't be mad there. Fair. Also, for asserting that Nelson Mandela uh, didn't die in prison, dude, I don't even know. What do you, I don't even, <laughs> what do you was he in prison? Like 2012 or something? Uh, he was in prison a lot. Oh, well, I mean, you know, he's a, never mind. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Chat GPT forms. So this is telling me that we need a longer docket before we go live. I mean, you can always just chat after you're done painting this. Dude, I am like ready to throw this mini in the freaking garbage this is part of the problem of only bringing uh you know how many i only brought like five colors down uh so my options of what to work with are extremely limited and the only shade i brought takes like 10 years to dry so i'm just smearing paint right now it's terrible i want to hide this okay have you ever like tried to see which paint tastes the best I just feel like that's a thing. Uh, I do not lick my brushes, so you'll oh. have to consult with another artist on that. All right. It's a very common thing that people do, but I do not. No, you're serious? People actually... Paint lickers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, th no, there's a genuine reason to do it. It's because uh, the dexterity of your tongue mixed with the saliva is arguably the best thing you can do to get a fine point. <laughs> Do the brush? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Um, Because that's about as good as I can do with this $1 brush I bought at the hobby store uh, using the palette. There's a certain dexterity to it. I'm better than an amateur, of course. Right. Uh, but if I were to roll this on my tongue, just to use a clean brush, you can see that it's like a tiny fraction of the size. I see. Yeah, it's much finer. Uh, Trippy Soul, he seems to be abhor. He abhors the, the aggression from Anon. 
this is just like normal. This is just kind of what the Discord is like. <laughs> we have a certain audience. Uh, they have a certain temperament. Let's is it that. weird that I actually am like more comfortable with toxic people than not? Not at all. I can't. I feel like if someone's not saying something obscene, they're holding back too much, and I can't really get a read on them. Oh yeah, Anon questioned whether or not you're an artist. You wanna you wanna respond? Writing is an art. Oh yeah, yeah, dog. Uh, Anon, I am not a good miniature artist. I don't know, man. Okay, so Trippy Soul says artiste. I'm still waiting for the answer on uh, <laughs> was Star Shatter actually good? So I may Anon. or may not have already purchased it. Anon says I was the kid in elementary school who ate glue and chewed erasers. Okay, so how does glue taste? Like, I don't understand why people would do that. Hey, why are you asking me that as if yeah. I've tasted You're the glue. guy that was eating glue. I was not eating glue. I did chew erasers. It, it tastes like... Erasers taste like dirt. Well, it does, I mean, dirt. I mean, that's strong. I mean, there's a certain richness to a certain brand of eraser. <laughs> You just gotta find, you gotta find the right brand of. Eraser. Talking about pink erasers or magic erasers, they're very different. Oh, why? Pink eraser. Sometimes okay, oh. there are pens with erasable, with like an eraser on the back, and those erasers taste you know chemical. Oh, but, King Bob says he has a review. You want to pull up King Bob's review of Star Shatter and take a look at that? Yeah, let me. Put I, I am definitely done with the miniatures I brought down. I I thought three minis would take a while, but I forgot that I'm like a speed painter. Which is not a compliment. Maybe I should <laughs> fix the eyes. Yeah, so um, we could probably, after we read King Bob's review of Star Shatter, is that what's called? Yeah, King Bob, drop us a link. Yeah, drop us a link. I'm going to screen share and then someone can read it. Do I have to read it? Do I have to read it, man? Yeah, just drop a link, man. I know I'm saying that a lot. I just keep forgetting there's like a significant delay so he, he's probably loading up wait 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 hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up oh okay never mind Anon says James is serving peak nectar energy. Serving is like drag. That, that's the point. My man. You can't say serving, dog. It's a little, like, it's a little aren't I supposed to have neckbeard energy right now? Yeah, man. We can't all be chuds, all right? There's got to be one chud and one like normal, like libertarian kind of guy who's into like D&D &D and shit, like a normal nerd. And then the other guy can be the wacky end bomb dropper all right so is, dibs on the end bomb dropper that's not fair i was born with that right <laughs> you can't just take it off me all right so caesar pizza wants to know what he's painting uh he's painting nothing right now i mean not in the camera at least oh is it just, i i am the kind of guy that pulls the mini into my chest to paint it oh it's like a stemming thing <laughs> another lol I, I was trying to tidy up the eyes. Oh, I see. And I actually, I consider that relatively tidied up. Why does the zombie have, like, a luscious head of hair? Uh, so, dead hair is how you make a wig, and wigs can look fine. Therefore, zombies have fine hair. Ooh, so, like, the cure to male pattern baldness is to be resurrected as an undead. You know, we can talk about zombies, because I did just finish a zombie apocalypse novel. Did you? Okay. A uh, novella, rather. It's hard to keep track of all your fucking projects, man. Yeah, because I, I write a bunch. And yeah. by the way, when's the nonfiction anthology going to uh, stop accepting submissions? April the 1st, according to April Head. April the 1st. But Head is like a nice guy, nicer than me, so he may extend that motherfucker. Don't count on it. Well, but once he's done extending, that's when I'm going to announce uh, the other anthology officially. Oh. And I'm going to shill that to try and try and get a, uh, you know, re writers who aren't already part of the, the Unreal Bros. 
yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring in, uh, you know, as much talent as we can get. Anon says that's about the only thing you have a pull into your chest. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm assuming. Uh, he's accusing me of having no bitches, which is accurate. Zero bitches, James? Zero. Bi well, I got Are a dog. Half a bitch? I have a female dog. Does that oh, count? Okay. She's black, though. Yeah. She is. You should put, put her on the camera. Wig of Destiny from King Bob. I was going to say something. I forgot. James, uh, I'm not going to read this, not because, again, because it's mean, but because I don't want James to pop off, man. He's going to. Do, it's called content. You want me to pop off. You, you get a little, okay. So James's motto is quantity over quality. Your response? Uh, so I actually advocate for quantity over quality uh, for the beginning of any writer's career. I, I think the stupidest thing is when someone gets so hung up on my story has to be perfect i need every paragraph to be metrically perfect on its own um that is a hallmark of a failure they will never amount to anything they're never going to finish a story worth a shit uh and they are not worth anyone's time uh there is, however, a transition point where just getting stories out into completion stops being the best idea. Uh, and I may or may not be at, the, at that point because uh, I definitely do write very quickly. And I am on a strategy of release a lot of stories. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not I can say that Faceless is not my best book. It is possibly the most atmospheric book I've written so far. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm obviously improving. Yeah, so. I mean, you got a lot of good responses for IMG. And I'll say, as the editor of the Tales of the Unreal series, KGB Agents is the best I've read from you. It was literally, you wrote with the idea, I'm just going to do like a perfect pulp horror short story. And you did. It was pretty good. Yeah, uh, you, you were doing a pulp magazine. So I was just like, I'm going to just give the... Uh, exactly what people are looking for in this it's not the most groundbreaking thing well yeah no but it, you know sometimes people overreach and the quality dives although listen i respect a motherfucker who's reaching for something beyond them even if i don't necessarily want to read that now i gotta read like these 10 comments people have left. uh yeah, so it's you know, gonna be weird when i'm the editor uh for an anthology you're definitely gonna be more mean than i am Oh I, yeah, that that everyone, almost needs to be a disclaimer. Everyone is. Head is more mean than I am. But really, this was like a crunch project, so I just took all the stories I got except for two. So Caesar says your dog is cute. Uh, so does Trippy, essentially. Uh, Anon is shocked that you have an actual neck beard. Uh, you yeah, do the uh, the the trim line of my beard varies day to day. You do need to justify the neck beard, man. What's up with that? Uh, hair don't grow on my cheeks that well. That's I, mean, I, I just had, dude, my job does not typically require me to turn on a camera. So now that I'm yeah. streaming semi-regularly, I will have to take care of it better. So King Bob agrees with your idea about quantity over quality. I don't think that's rare now. And I don't think it's a dichotomy. Like obviously people are not trying to pump out first draft garbage, but yeah, I mean, if you're an indie, unless F you're F Gardner, uh, friend of the show, F Gardner, esteemed author, F Gardner. We have <laughs> nothing. I have nothing bad to say about F Gardner. I Other can't because I haven't actually ever read any of his stuff. I read instant Jigoku was functional. I've never lied about the quality of his books. Jigoku was functional. Well, maybe I'll check it out one day. Anon questions whether you you're serious about saying caring about the quality of your writing is pointless. Because you did go like... Uh, well, Anon needs to listen better because uh, writing is not something that you just write one story and you're done. Uh, it is a very difficult skill to develop and no one seems to understand how much work goes into developing that skill. Uh, that's why you get so many video game developers that just don't hire a writer. They just try and do it themselves and you get terrible ass stories. Uh, the the propensity of people to write to share their first story that they ever write genuinely shocks me because if you were to think about 
any other artistic endeavor, drawing, painting, music, sculpting, whatever. Everyone knows that you start terrible at those. No, Anna, I'm not getting a haircut. Uh, but, but for some reason, people think that because they've watched movies that they can write a good story. So, like, you you need to put in the practice, and you need to get the raw quantity, as lo along with the uh, the study and so on. And until you've done that, your quality is simply going to be garbage. You have to start with quantity, and there you can obviously just pursue money by only pursuing quantity, uh, but you cannot get quality without first having quantity. Yes. Yeah, so, by the way, I can do at least six pull ups. So, buzz off, Trippy. Anon is hating on your your vest, man. It is so cold in this basement. The vest is literally necessary. But your your arms are like, like what about your arms though? Also, Anon More is temperature. he is frying you up, bro. You gotta fight him. Uh he is giving us content. If people think because they've been writing their entire lives that they essentially have you know eighteen years of practice in the art form. Oh, like like yeah, because tweeting angrily is how you tell a good story. <laughs> well, they don't they don't get that. Like, imagine if your medium of communication was like drawing images, conveying your thoughts. Then even if you're not like an artist, you're like, well, I've done this for so long. Surely what I produce is worth consuming, right? I get why they think that. But, you know, the initial slap down should probably put you off that course of thought. A lot of people, so that, that brings me back to writing communities where they police you super heavily. Because if you can't tell someone that they wrote dog shit, they're not going to get better. Like, I do think that uh, feedback is basically a meme, uh, that people aren't actually looking for criticism, they're looking for validation. Um, and people need validation, not knocking yeah. that. Uh, you are the one that is going to figure out your issues. You're not going to have them told to you unless you can afford thousands and thousands of dollars for a professional editor. I mean, obviously people need guidance, but uh, I will say sometimes in non-moderated writing communities, sort of like ours, people are too gleeful to shit on like a newcomer. They need oh, to be that's, that's just meanness. You have to at least be accurate. That's why I always try and tell people I have this weird quirk that people probably don't appreciate of if I say like your opening paragraph is bad, I will often just rewrite their paragraph for them with the exact same content, usually 20% shorter and far more evocatively. And I go, this is how you do what you're trying to do better. And some people thrive for that kind of feedback. Other people never talk to me again. Well, yeah, because I mean, like you say, people need to find they need feedback and guidance, but they also kind of need to find their own, you know, their own lane. I do notice, especially on WG, which is a, not our community, but it's an adjacent community. Those people are way too aggressive with their advice. Cause I know everyone here is an amateur, of course, but like half of WG, they're like rank amateurs. They really are complete beginners and they're very aggressive with advice and people will take that advice at face value. Yeah. There is a large amount of people in WG that get their jollies from tearing other people down. We all know that. And I, Anna, I don't know what you think I've done that's quirky. You say you're a quirked up white boy. <laughs> Listen, I respect like the comments, man. This is so many comments. I don't know what that does for the algo. There are 11 people here. That's like six more than I expected to be the average. That's pretty baller. We're at 12 now. Baller. Dude, I think it is. I think the constant toxicity and commenting and complaining is actually juicing the algorithm. And niggas love a fight. Uh, individuals love a fight. I'm kind of like waiting with bated breath for his next hate comment, man. He's got me, <laughs> he's got me addicted. All right. So we are actually out of subjects. I'm out of minis to paint desire to paint i guess uh 
Not so a lot. dog hasn't woken up. We are actually just engaging in bants right now. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, I want to close out. We're like uh, 10 minutes from two hours. I like to close out at that mark. But if it fades before that, just just you can say goodbye. Um, I would say added me. Last you call. Added me. Did I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the private chat, I was going to say, because I made a, I, saw, I put a ZD in the oven for those at home before the stream went live. So I pinged him so he could stall while I went and grabbed that ZD. I still haven't eaten it. It's been like two hours. I really want that fucking TV. Anyway. Uh, Trippy Soul made uh, a comment. I don't know if you read that. Aina wants to know what the dog's name is. Someone told me to dab. Yeah, I'm going to put that comment up there so people have the context of what you just did with your body. Aina. I'm glad that was mostly out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> What is the dog's name? River. R-I-V-E-R. I wanted an outdoorsy name that wasn't quite a human name, you know? Right. There, there's that weird catch of, do you give a dog a human name, a dog name, or somewhere in between? Uh, and I wanted an outdoorsy uh, name for the dog, and you know, I thought River sounded good. Yeah, uh, Trippy Soul. Yeah, good night. Go and get your food. I know Thanks for joining, Trippy. It's not half as good as this fucking ziti I got in the oven, but what is a ziti? Uh, it's um, it's just basic. It's uh, I'm Lent, so I can't eat meat, so I don't even have like meat sauce. It's just tomato sauce, and um, it's uh, just like a regular Midwest pasta bait kind of dish. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. I'm from the Midwest. I've never heard of this. You, you seeing is like all of these baked pasta things are like Midwest inventions. They're not actually Italian. So like baked spaghetti, like all that cheese and shit in it is not Italian. It's just from like Germans who have mangled Italian cuisine, even though it tastes very good. Oh, so uh, that just reminded me of something. I'm working on outlining act four of my web novel, Undying Emperor. And in act four, uh, the hero goes to the southern wastelands, which is a godless and sunless realm of madness where hardly any plants grow and it's always day but you can never see the sun uh because the sun is literally their god like literally oh. uh and that causes just rampant cannibalism and madness among the tribes of you know what a uh, colonizer would call you know small savages mm -hmm. uh and i had to think what uh naming scheme what country am i going to take inspiration from for these uh crazy people in the south italian just gotta go for the Italians. <laughs> yeah, see ya, uh, King Bob. Thanks for uh, you know, thanks for showing up. Thanks, thanks for stopping by, King Bob. Yeah. Uh, as we're winding down, the only thing you haven't pimped is Undying Emperor, which is sort of the quiet project you've got going on. Even though it's you say that, but it's also like by far my most successful. It just yeah. hasn't made money because I don't charge for it. I have three hundred and twelve followers and sixty four reviews. Like, that's more reviews than the rest of the Unreal Bros' books combined. Oh, and listen, uh, you've been on the grind there. Like, every time you update us, it's like, oh, I've just jumped like 100 places in the rankings. Yeah, I'm rank 808 right now. Wow. Out of like 60,000. Yeah, and you were like two something in your last update. You haven't been updating us in like a little bit. Well, I, I've stalled. Uh, I can't tell if I'm doing better or worse at, from switching from two chapters a week to one chapter a week. Uh, but mm -hmm. I definitely need the extra time to pursue projects. I was spending way too much time on uh, writing specifically that story. And uh, I want to actually start over with something else. Something more geared to the Royal Road audience. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell you business, but you could definitely package Undying Emperor at this point. In like a book type deal. I'm going to go ahead and drop that link in the chat as the last thing. I mean, yeah, that's why I'm uh, querying Athon books about. Yeah, I didn't want to tell people that unless you were comfortable, but yeah. Yeah, let's talk about, like, let's not talk about it, but it's Atheon, why? you're an independent writer who writes, fan well, really, who writes anything. Atheon is no longer even small press. They published 200 books last year. They're basically doing what we want to do with, like, pure pulp and I'm not going to call it schlock, but, you know pure pulp which is that we there's a market for good old-fashioned 
books that are just, you know, they're in the genre and they don't have like a bent or any sort of, God, I hate saying this, agenda. It's just typical standard genre fare. But people aren't really catering to that as much as they were in the past. So Atheon was like, let's just buy all these people's books, especially ones that already have a following. And they have really made a pretty significant like publishing house out of that. They published 200 books last year. They published like two books a week this year. It's it's a pretty big operation. And yeah, and you know, maybe they'll be interested in working with me. Uh, maybe not. I, I tend to not intelligently target demographics and genres. So a publisher might look at me and call me too stupid to work with. <laughs> so. yeah, I'm sure, listen, they don't, they pitch so many jobs at this point that I'm sure they can find a fit if they like your shit. But I'm going to go ahead and let you like say sign R and show whatever you have to show before you close up. Uh, check me out on Amazon. You can go to my website, James Craig. I have a bunch of articles about the stuff I write. I, on my website, it's a private website. I'm pretty upfront with what I what is on my mind about the projects in a less marketing oriented flavored type deal. Uh, so if you're if you want to peek inside my mind, you can find, you can read my articles on my website. All right, let me get that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> ain't I'm still hating. He says, uh, "No, nah, I'm good." Thanks for hanging out to the end, dog. Uh, Anon, at least. Um, thanks everybody for showing up. I don't think there's any point in liking it at this point, but if you like our stuff and you're not subscribed, you know, please subscribe. Although I think everyone who's commented is subscribed. They have a little flair. Yeah, thanks for showing up. This this went slightly better than I figured. And it's our first. And no I mean, we outperformed Miles' writing stream by quite a bit. Respectfully. Because Miles' <laughs> stream flopped because it was my... The, the writing streams were my idea. Uh, my second worst idea after the podcast episode clips. I mean, was the problem just that Miles couldn't write fast enough to engage with chat? Miles... I do want to flex on him. Miles did not want to engage with chat. He wanted to write and have chat in the background, which is like... Which is fair, because how the fuck do you write and also talk to people? It's just a... It was a losing setup, and I regret forwarding the idea. And I was going to build, like, an entire month around those things, so glad I didn't. Respectfully. All right. That's been me, Ryan J. H. Davis. You can follow me <laughs> on Twitter at John Henry Davis Six. I'm not gonna say my actual Twitter name because it may not I may not be allowed to say that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Listen to our latest podcast. We interview the author of Fed Book. It's really good. Did you read Fed Book? Or did you just interview him because he's a cool dude? It's really good. <laughs>